Got it. Pretty crappy here. So if we lose, okay, yeah. We're probably right. live now, just so you know. So, hey, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, my guest today is from Plant Based Royalty. She's Kim Campbell, and she has a fabulous new book. It is called The Plant Pure Comfort Food Cookbook, and she's going to be making Thai tacos from it. Now, that there's beautiful photos in this book. Thai tacos is one that does not have a photo, but I want to show you. Well, Three of my favorite photos for the book. Well, this one you can't eat. Well, maybe you can. He's so cute. I just love that you put your doggy in the book. Adorable. So these pictures, don't you want to make this? Look at this one. I mean, look at these. They look like real onion rings from a fast food restaurant. It looks like it's on a green bean casserole. But this one is drool worthy because my favorite food in the whole world, even before I was vegan, was nachos. Look at that. Doesn't that look like a restaurant? Anyway, and this stuff is healthy and it's easy to make and you're going to learn more about it. Please welcome Kim to the show. This is a wonderful book, the pictures, everything about it, the ease of the recipes. You got the little muffin formulator. I love it. Hi, AJ. Hey. Nice to, be here. Nice to see you. Your kitchen is beautiful as well. Thank you. Yes, I, I, I wanted to show everybody my beautiful. This is the first time I've ever been able to create my own kitchen. So that's the fun part. There's nothing you know like it. You said that there was no pictures of the Thai tacos. I thought there were, but on page 171, there's seaside lime tacos. So you get kind of get the idea of it, but there's some really beautiful taco pictures in the cookbook. So Okay. I just couldn't find Thai, ta thai tacos. I, know. I thought that was in there, so I apologize. There's seaside for... lime, you guys, seaside lime tacos, but uh, that's okay. I found pictures that I like so much. Is this your third cookbook, Kim? This is my third cookbook. I did Plant Pure Nation and I did Plant Pure Kitchen. And then this is Plant Pure Comfort Food. So my third one. Uh, that For people to think that you can't have your favorites and be vegan and healthy, they got to get this book. Yes. Yes. I This is my favorite cookbook because I think it's, and you know this, every time you write a book and you create recipes, you get better at it. And so I feel like this was, this was my experience at work. So it's a, it's my favorite cookbook. Nice. I can't wait. What have you guys been up to? Oh, lots of things. Um, <clears throat> we've been developing um, a, another dry line, uh, sort of a, we're going to, I think we're going to call them healthy helpers. So I've been working on that, had my head in that. Um, it's really a cool concept, AJ, because what it is, is mostly sauces. We have an enchilada sauce, we have a cheese sauce, we have a peanut sauce, a curry sauce, and then you can build, use this sauce to build recipes. So you could probably use that some of the sauces in this um, recipe as well. So we're working with a coat packer right now. Nelson's been working on a film from food to freedom, which is an amazing film, and that will be out in March. Um, so yeah, we've been really busy at Plant Pure. It's, it's good. Nice. It's all good. Well, well, I think with sauces, anything can taste good. And I'm curious, are they going to be like, do you have to reconstitute them? Will they become like bottles, jars? How will they be? Most of them, you just add water to them, blend them, and then you can put them, you know, in a recipe. Like, for example, with the cheese sauce, you just add water and you can make soups with it. You can make um, like the New England chowder recipe. So when you buy the packs, you also get the, the recipes. So there's like 15 recipes, 15 different ways you could go with the cheese sauce. There are several, five, between five and 10 recipes for every single sauce. Um, I have a cookie uh, pack, which is, we love. I have a burger pack too. You just add boiling water and let it sit and it turns into burgers. So that's going to make it so easy. Now I'm assuming because you're a Campbell that everything's probably oil-free. Yes, everything is oil-free. Um, we tried to minimize salts, um, minimal sugars. So yeah, I, I think it's a great line. We oh use them. <laughs> when do you expect it to be released? And can you come on the show and maybe introduce them? Because they sound fabulous. I would love to do that, AJ. Um, we're hoping that they're going to be available in March when the film comes out. So we can use the film to kind of get the word out there. Nice. Um, James is saying, that sounds awesome. I hope they are somewhat affordable. I love sauces and dips. Yes, that's the, that's the goal. Um, but even though they're sauces, you can make full, full recipes with it. So you can make a taco soup with the enchilada sauce. 
Um, there's just so many different, you can make scalloped potatoes with cheese sauce. So there's lots of things you can do with it. And I, I'm actually not done creating. So that's, it's almost like a separate cookbook. So my head's been in that a lot. That is so cool. You know what sauce I want? Because when you buy it at the store, not only does it have a lot of salt, but it also often has sugar and oil, is I prefer green enchilada sauce to red. Oh, me too. It's because it's, it's, it's a little bit more sour, right? Yeah. with the t- And so is that by any chance going to appear in your line or would you make one? Because no. you know, Chef Bravo always says, you're so lazy, just make it. But I am lazy. That's why I want to buy it. Yeah. <laughs> You need to come work for us and help us develop a green one because I hadn't thought about that. That's a great idea. You'd have to get the the dry, the powder for the green tomatillos. So yeah, that 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 is my favorite sauce. If somebody is willing to do that, well, great. Would you ever be willing? And again, this is you know, first of all, I I, I eat salt. I mean, I don't add it to food, but it's in condiments. But there are a segment of people for whatever reason choose to be zero salt. Would you ever consider having maybe even just one thing on the line, just strictly um, SOS free? Yeah, yeah, we we would consider it. The problem is when we when we do SOS free, it's such a small population, AJ, that I'm not sure I'm not sure we could afford to keep it on the shelf um, because if no one buys it, that's I think that's the issue. But yeah, I think we we could go that in that direction. But if it tasted good, people wouldn't care, you know. I mean, so exactly. anyway, just 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 because I know there are people for whom that would be like a yeah, yeah want it. a lot of people that are very salt sensitive. So yeah, I just maybe it doesn't have to be the whole line, but maybe like one thing that that it's is fine. like maybe just the cheese sauce or just the sauce. You know, I'm just just putting it out there if it could be created. No, it's good. It's a good idea. We had a, a sauce that was just salt free just to see how how it would go yeah, yeah why not well i know dr mcdougall says no salt no sale but you know dylan holmes has a whole line of salt free stuff and he's he's crushing it so i think it's just a matter of finding the audience you know uh-huh oh, absolutely yeah you, you know because the reason i say that is you know i'm in this world with a lot of people that are sos free vegan but when i lived in the desert i mean i lived in a 55 and over community and there were people there that were as far from vegan as you could be but still had to avoid salt for different reasons. So there, there is a population out there, believe it or not. There is. And I, and I think as you get older too, your blood pressure is more sensitive. You know, you tend to, I mean, I, I've seen it with my, my own parents, you know, as they got older, they tended to struggle with blood pressure a little bit. So, yeah. Well, if anybody can do it, it's you. So great. So Thai, Thai tacos. I, I love tacos. I love everything tacos. could be tacos, right? I mean, you could make tacos out of just about anything. You can, you can go in every, I'm going to talk about that today when we start making it, but you can go in any direction you want with Thai ta- with tacos. You can fuse it with Mexican, you can go Asian, you can go Italian, you know, whatever, whatever you like. Um, it's really just, just a, a preference. I happen to like Thai food. I like ginger and lime and all that good stuff. So I wanted to make Thai tacos. Mm, I yeah. can't wait. Yeah. Yeah, this is a good one. So do you want tell, do you want me to get started, AJ? Yes, I'd love to see you your magic. Okay, so um, we're going to start with every, most everybody who's been plant based for any length of time knows about what cauliflower walnut uh, meat is. So it's the, the the meat. It's the it's the beef of your taco. So I started out with with walnuts, and I love walnuts because they're really heart healthy. Um, they really add, they add some, some oil, some natural oil in the nut. So it helps build the flavor. So if you aren't using nuts or seeds, you can just use the cauliflower by itself. It'll be a little bit different, but you could definitely do that. So what I did with the cauliflower is I haven't cut it up yet because I wanted to talk about it. Um, you know, you can buy, and I'm pretty lazy. I tend to buy things that are already prepped a lot just because it makes my life easier. So I bought a bag of cauliflower that was already um, cut and washed. It was organic. It was, it was great. So let's talk about organic a little bit, because if you can go organic, it's great. I don't think it's a lot more expensive. It's getting a lot more affordable. So go, you know, the dirty dozen, pick the ones that you know that are the most unclean and go organic on that, that route. I think cauliflower is important that you go organic. So if you notice, I'm not, cutting all the core out because when I use vegetables, I tend to use all of the vegetables, even the leaves on the celery and you don't throw it away. So we're going to use the core. I still have a little bit of leaves. On I that. love the green part. It's delicious. It is. And you're not going to know because it's going to, it's going to be 
all immersed with the walnuts and the spices. So you need to cut it up a little bit small and put it in your food processor. If you don't have a food processor, you can do this recipe without a food processor and you can make it a little chunkier. I actually like it chunky. So you can do it both ways. I think that's probably pretty good right there. My food processor and my blender are my two most used kitchen appliances. So we're gonna stick this in, I'll come over here with the camera, and my food processor. And if you really were lazy, like I am a lot, you can just buy the rice cauliflower. It's everywhere, it's in every supermarket. And not only if you chop up your walnuts, it absolutely is. I've seen it at Walmart. I've seen it at the 99 cent store. I've seen it fresh. I've seen it frozen. Absolutely. You know, a lot of people don't want to spend a lot of time in their kitchen. I don't spend a lot of time in my kitchen. And I think there's just so many shortcuts now. And it's worth it to spend a little extra money than to go out and buy restaurant food that has oil and lots of salt and sugar and buying processed foods that's already prepared for you. At least with this, you know what's going into it. So I'm putting a cup and a half of walnuts in here. I might have put a little bit more in there because I was trying to make a big, big fan. And then just pulse it. I don't get too noisy on me. Oh, I don't know how to explain the food process. All right, here we go. That's, that's about as far down as, as I'm going to go. And you can take it out and then make sure you eat the big chunks because that's a good scene. Um, you can take it out and you can mix it in a bowl with the ingredients I'm going to put in. But we just decided to go ahead and mix it in my food processor rather than getting another bowl dirty. So we're going to add, we're going to spice this up a little bit. And this is where you can get creative. This is your cauliflower taco meat. You can add Mexican spices to it. You can get your favorite spice blend. Um, you, you really could put anything in this. You could just do a plain, but that's pretty boring if you're gonna go to the effort of blending it. So I'm gonna grab my cookbook because I don't wanna miss the ingredients. So with this, we're gonna add um, two tablespoons of lime juice. And if you wanna add some lime zest, you can do that. You can take a zester, I love my zester, it just makes Everything thing, and this isn't in the recipe, but if something calls for lime juice, why not put a little lime zest in there too? Yep. So I love all things citrusy and sour. It's probably my favorite way to go with the recipe. All right, and then um, after the lime juice, I'm gonna put two tablespoons of tamari sauce. Tamari sauce is gluten-free, which is why I used it in the cookbook. I tried to make most of the recipes gluten-free because that's where people are going. There's a lot of people who are gluten sensitive, so I was trying to kind of, trying to meet those needs. Um, and one tablespoon of rice vinegar. All right. Well, I'll just dump it in. Rice vinegar is a little bit sweet. Um, sometimes they put sugar in it. That'll sweeten it up a little bit. If you don't want sugar, you need to make sure. I don't know, AJ, do any rice vinegars not have sugar in them? Right. Yes. There's there, the, there are some brands. You just it, yes, I, I could run over and show you, but yes, there's one at Trader Joe's that has no sugar, even at the local Rayleigh's. You just have to get one that just says rice vinegar. Right, right. So just yeah, be careful because a lot of them have sugar. And if you don't want that, you know, you need to read the ingredients always. And then um, I've got ginger and I want to show you. As I buy these, I get them in the produce section at the supermarket, and I like it because it doesn't have oil in it. Most of the spice pastes have oil in it, but this one doesn't. Or you can peel your ginger and just put it on a microplane and go at it. It's even easier if it's frozen. I get the frozen little cubes at Trader Joe's, and they don't have oil. The, the, the garlic does, but the ginger doesn't, interestingly enough. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, I, I've been known to get those if I'm in a pinch because I, I just don't minor major in these minor details. But you get, you get really good at knowing what's in food and knowing I can go through the store practically blindfolded and I know what I'm going to get. 
I just bought an app I want to tell you about, AJ. It's called Yuka. Have you ever heard of it? No, spell it for me. I-U-K-A. No, what is it? There was a lady at Walmart yesterday, and she was scanning all the breads. And I told her which one was good. I said, you need to get that one. I got the Dave's Killer Bread. And she scanned it, and it gives it a score from 0 to 100 of how clean it is. And then it tells you why it's not clean if it's high in salt or high in sugar or if it's got chemicals. So the Dave's Killer Bread came out 93%. But when I got to the condiment section and I was grabbing ketchup and teriyaki sauce, I was scanning those and they were getting scores of like seven, eight. So, and they were, they're pretty accurate, but it's called Yuka. It's really fun. Very cool. Hey, Kim, uh, Luann says um, she's allergic to walnuts. Is there a sub in the recipe? I think you could use any kind of a nut. You could use almonds. You could use sesame, not sesame seeds, sunflower seeds. Um, you could use cashews. You really could use anything. If you're not using nuts at all, then just do the cauliflower without, you don't need to, you know, substitute anything oh, in. What about, what about mushrooms? Mushrooms, yes. But mushrooms have a lot of water. Yeah. So it's going to be a little bit softer, but it'll still taste really good. I would, if I was going to use mushrooms, I probably would use shiitake mushrooms because they're not quite as watery. Mm -hmm. All right. And then I have um, some, I put a little bit of maple syrup in there. You don't have to put this in. It's about a teaspoon and a half. And then the spices are garlic powder, onion powder, coriander, and chili powder. So just put all those in there. And that's it. You know, if you want to go fresh with things like garlic, you can always go fresh with garlic. Um, sometimes I have garlic cloves fresh in there and sometimes I don't. So all right, and then just give it a pulse. Oh, I just I just got stains on my foot. <laughs> it's gonna start showing its wear. And then just kind of move it around a little bit. You don't want it to get mushy. I made a batch earlier and it got mushier than I wanted it to. Nobody okay. likes mushy tacos. <laughs> That's probably good. And then um, I preheated my oven at around 375, 400, depends on your oven. Um, that those are, to me, those are the magic numbers. So then line a cooking sheet with parchment paper and just dump it on. What's nice about this taco meat is if you make a bunch of it, you'll have it and you can put it in a container and you can make, put it on top of your salads. Um, you know, I just thought of something, you know, if you wanted to, why couldn't you use chickpeas for this? If you didn't yeah, want to use them. Why not? Yeah. Um, all right. And sometimes walnuts are expensive. Okay. I, I get most of my nuts and seeds at Costco. So then spread it all out. And you're going to bake this for about 30 to 40 minutes. Make sure because it has walnuts in it and, and, and the, the oil and the walnuts will make it, um, burn easily. So go in after, I don't know, 15 or 20 minutes and just give it a little turn. There. I'm going to stick that in the oven. So I'll show you what it looks like finished. Let's put it over here. You can see around the edges, um, it started to burn a little bit, but even though it was wetter than I wanted it. Look at that. Wow, it looks so realistic. Yeah, yeah. So Nelson, we are gonna be eating a lot of taco meat. <laughs> we have two batches, so. All right, so over here, while the taco meat is cooking, um, I'm gonna make the coleslaw. And where would be the best spot, Nelson? Maybe right here, I'm gonna make a mess in my stove. So again, this is another cheat. You can buy the coleslaw already made, or you can cut all of your vegetables and make, you know, put more carrots in it, whatever you want. 
I, I I actually went to Walmart because I didn't have time to go to Trader Joe's, so I got the Walmart tricolor. But I typically go to Trader Joe's, and this is one of the bags that I buy three or four. So we have a lot of coleslaw at our house because I just like it. It's really easy. And sometimes I'll just add a little bit more red cabbage to it just to give it a little more color and more antioxidants and all of that. So I love this recipe because coleslaw is mayonnaise, right? Well, this is not mayonnaise. Um, we're gonna add some rice vinegar to it. Um, we're gonna add mangoes, green onions, cilantro, and lime juice. So this is lime juice right here. And if you like it a little bit more zesty, add more. That's the thing, you, you just can flavor things the way you enjoy it. A little bit of rice vinegar. And then the mango. The mango is where you're going to get your sweetness. So you don't need to have any anything other than mangoes. Now it says a cup and a half, but I put a lot more in the nap. AJ, I want to show everybody how I cut my mangoes because I think it's really fun. Yeah, please do. All right. So I'm going to bring the camera over here. So a lot of people will take a mango. You want to cut it right down the middle, right? So it's got like two cheeks on both sides and you cut it right down the middle on each side. Just want to make sure you're getting a lot of the core. So a lot of people will do this. I'm going to cut it this way and you can do that, but I don't cut it this way. I think it's more cumbersome. And you can just split it. But you, if, if your mango is not real ripe, these are kind of hard to get out. If it's real ripe, this is kind of a great way to do it. But what I like to do is take a glass, especially if the mango is not quite, quite ripe, and just kind of go down in. I think it gets more of the mango, too. Is there a way to know if your mango's ripe when you're picking it out? When you when you when you're buying them, if you squeeze them, if they're just a little bit soft, it's, they're better. But I don't know. Right now, this time of year, they're they're not they're not the best. So then you got your big chunk, and now I can cut it really tiny. So that's how I cut mango, and I know a lot of people do it this way, but I just think it's easier to do it this way. That's it. I'm not gonna, I'll have to get that later. I'm going to eat that when we're gone. There's two different kinds of mangoes, aren't there? Like one is, is it one called like Alphonse or something? Yeah, the yellow one. Um, that one's really tender and soft. What is it called, AJ? I thought it was called, Al like, is, guys, is it Alphonse or something or I, or something? Yeah, I'm, I'm not a mango uh, expert by any means. I ate so many mangoes years ago when I had the flu because it was the only thing that sounded good to me. And I broke out all over my mouth. And that's a thing. <laughs> and I had to go to the dentist because I thought I had something really wrong with me. And he said, no, I think you have a food allergy. But I, mangoes are one of those things. You don't have to be allergic to them. You can just be really sensitive to them. So you have to be careful, especially with little kids. So be mindful of that. I'm going to add a little bit of cilantro. And then I'm going to save the rest for a garnish. And that's your slaw. And if you make the slaw even like, oops, the night before, um, it just gives it enough time to marinate and really develop flavor. You could put kale in this. You could probably do a massage kale salad too. You could massage the kale add the seasonings, add the mango, and then you could use kales instead of coleslaw. Coleslaw is a little bit crunchier though. Mm -hmm. All right, and that is that. So one of the things about my cookbook is I try not to complicate things and I'm always trying to show people shortcuts and ways to do things. And there's recipes in there that are complex that take a little bit of time and you enjoy being in the kitchen. But a lot of these recipes are under easily under 30 minutes, 15, 30 minutes. So 
because most of us don't want to spend hours in the kitchen either. And just because you're vegan does not mean you have to spend hours in the kitchen at all. All right, so let's work on the peanut sauce. I love a peanut sauce. And if you had our dry line, our healthy helper line, we have a peanut sauce. All you do is add water and you cook it a little bit because it gets thicker when you cook it and cook it. We use it for stir fry. I use it all the time. Um, I'm trying to think of what else I use the peanut sauce in. I have about five recipes that we're, we're using it in. Can't wait to share them with you guys. All right. Um, do you have a favorite recipe in the book or a most popular one? It's, I'm moody. So <laughs> this week, I'll say it's probably my lasagna stew because it's winter time and it's comfort food. Um, it's, all, it's all comfort food, but it's, you know, it's really nice for cool seasons. I love this recipe a lot because I think it's very easy and I'm kind of a taco hound. Um, this, rest, this cookbook also has a lot of delicious desserts. I'm not a dessert person. I don't crave sweets as much as my other half does. He loves sweets. Um, so dessert's not where my brain goes, but I really put a lot of energy into this book because a lot of people were asking. So we've got a sweet potato chocolate pie, and I believe there's no added sugar. It's just dates and sweet potatoes. Um, a little bit of chocolate chips, but you can use the Stevia brand as the brand Lily's has used the Stevia. Um, so I have a key lime pie. I have um, uh, a lemon, lemon bars, uh, peanut butter cup cookies. It's just, I think it's really rich with uh, dessert. So if you're looking for that, certainly you will find them in this book. There's lots of entrees. I, I go heavy in the entrees because when I buy a cookbook, that's why I buy it. So, so you would be able to find something you enjoy. I mean. There's Spanish paella. Um, we have a mole sauce. There's um, some couple of Indian dishes. So when I did this cookbook, uh, it was during the it was during the pandemic, and Nelson and I were cooking a lot. And we, we like to go out and explore different restaurants, but we couldn't do that. So I started cooking all the things that we enjoyed at a restaurant that I wouldn't normally cook. And so I, I thought about comfort food in all the different cultures. So like I had falafels. Um, I'm gonna open. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through here because afterwards I'm gonna say, I can't believe I didn't tell you that. Um, the uh, um, I have a chickpea tikka masala, uh, tamales, which is a lot of fun. Now that's probably more of a complex recipe. I have um, crabless. Uh, jackfruit crabless cakes, samosa burritos. I think I made those on the last show I did with you. So lots of different recipes all around the world. All right, so I put three tablespoons of all natural peanut butter. Guys, make sure you buy all natural peanut butter. And even if it says it's all natural, then look at the ingredients because you only want peanuts in it. You don't need to have the sugar and they put a lot of oil in it so that if you scoop out the peanut butter and it and it's not there's no oil in it then most likely it's got hydrogenated oils so natural peanut butter and then two garlic cloves i'm going to put three in because i love garlic and then um, lime juice and rice vinegar so this is the lime juice and then some rice vinegar but this doesn't have any sugar in it whatever sweetener is in here is from the rice vinegar and then um tamari and again i use tamari because it's gluten-free i like to over soy sauce it's just smoother kim gina says she misses your live cooking show so yeah so we did a couple on facebook about two weeks ago i've done two so far and we went live in this kitchen and then our internet was terrible. We live about a mile deep in the woods and our internet in our neighborhood is really bad. So we're, we're starting to tape shows. Tomorrow we're gonna to tape our first show and we're gonna be offering culinary cooking shows every week. So they're coming back starting next week. Good, Morgan said she misses it too. I'm, I miss teaching, I really do the in-person. We had a pod meeting last weekend and I did a cooking class there. It was the first time I've done an in-person cooking class in 
three years. So I was, wow. nervous. I was so nervous. I'm not nervous now, but I was so nervous looking at all the people. I'm just not used to teaching in front of a bunch of eyes. Even though I, there's eyes here, you, I, I just can't see you. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean. Or if you can, I'd be really, really small. All right. So I put the water in there too. I think I snuck it in with a lime, but that's what it looks like. And a lot of people, a lot of people um, think they have to have a fancy blender. It's interesting. This is the blender I use more often than anything, which is the Nutribullet. My kids all have Nutribullets. I hardly ever use my Vitamix unless I'm making a really big batch. How many kids do you guys have? And how many dogs? We have three kids and two dogs, but every child has a dog. And every time they go away, they, open, they drop their dogs off. So right now we have three dogs here, <laughs> but our kids are old, they're grown, um, they're 32. I'm gonna get this wrong, 29 and 26. The youngest just got married. Um, so one of them is a clinical social worker, counselor. She counsels me and she's on right now. I think she is. And then one of them um, is a programmer. He's in, in IT, like your husband, AJ. And then my youngest is a registered nurse. So we just need a lawyer and a doctor in the family, what we all said. Uh, were they all raised plant-based? They were all raised plant-based. And I think that was what really got me serious about, you know, getting every little piece of dairy or anything that we had in the house when when our oldest was born, Whitney, um, I got I got really careful. And my son, who had chronic ear, in, ear infections all the time, so I was really paranoid about that because he would go to preschool and school and, you know, he would get into some of the cheeses and then, boom, he'd have an ear infection and all this goop and stuff. So it's, it's definitely, re it's related. That's the thing. But, yeah, we, we raised them that way. But, you know, they they did they did their thing when they went to school. And I hoped and prayed they, you know, would be plant-based. So they are. <laughs> I mean, their, their, their grandfather's Dr. Colin Campbell. They darn well better be, right? And well, I think every grandchild in our family, and I don't know how many there are. There's probably 12 of them, 13, and they're all plant-based. So if they're not, they're not, they're not telling us. <laughs> Must make holiday good. eating very easy. Pardon? Must make holiday eating very easy when there's no dissension over food. Yes. No, we have the best vacations. So every year the Campbells all go to the beach. Um, and we, what we do is there's 20 some of us. What we do is we pick a night for families to cook. So one night is, you know, Nelson and I will do all the cooking. And everybody's always trying to be a little bit better than the guy before them. So we have the most amazing meals because everybody's trying to, you know, show off their, their culinary skills. So it's a lot of fun. Yeah. All right, I'm going to blend this. Here we go. So this is a little thicker than I want it. So I, maybe I just didn't add enough water or sometimes if I add too much peanut butter. Oh, it's good. It's a little spicy. So what I'm gonna do is just add a little bit of water to it. And we blend it. Oh, that's good. Don't forget the sriracha. The sriracha and the vinegar are key with this. Kim Lisa's asking, is there a way to get the written recipe to this recipe? Is it posted anywhere? Did I miss that? Recipe posted. Um, this recipe is not, I don't believe this one is posted. It was in the Veg magazine for a while. I'm not sure, AJ, if it's posted on our website or not. Okay, thank you. I think it is. Um, I think so. You could give right. it to AJ. I'll give it to you, AJ, and then you can post it. Right. And I'll in the meantime, I'll look and see if it is posted on your website. Yeah. All right. So I love mason jars. 
I keep sauces in mason jars in the refrigerator. And this actually keeps us on track because a lot of times for lunch, normally I would double this recipe and I'm probably going to double it after we get off the show. And I'll keep it in the refrigerator and I'll put the date on it and I'll label it. So we might have this with a stir fry tomorrow for lunch. Um, but I think one of the ways you can keep yourself from getting derailed is having some sauces in the refrigerator. And of course, you know, you can buy them in the grocery store. But like I said, condiments are usually kind of scary because you never know what they put in them. Lots of times they put oil in them, and a lot of salt and sugar. But if you make your own, you'll have sauces. And then keep grains in the refrigerator, things like rice and potatoes and pasta, if that's your thing, or farro or millet or quinoa. And you make, make a lot, don't make a little, make a lot, put it in your refrigerator, have your sauces. And then if you buy frozen uh, vegetable blends, you can just put it all together. And that's what we do for lunch a lot because I'm in a hurry and I'm not home. Nelson knows he's got, he's got a sauce, he's got the grain and he's got the vegetables. Um, I just think that really helps. All right. A lot of people will ask me what kind of tortillas I typically get, not these. <laughs> I typically get um, food for life, food for life tacos or corn tortillas, and I get them at um, our food co-op. These are just plain straight up corn tortillas. You can put them in your oven. You put them, you just steam them a little bit, put them upside down on a rack. That's a lot of work. I hardly ever do that. You can get these little, I have these little tins and you can put flour tortillas in them. You can put, Corn tortillas. Corn tortillas are a little bit small, so you can see what you get. And I like the Food for Life brand because they're a lot bigger. Um, and so are the flour tortillas. You can get the Ezekiel's. And these are great. If you get a big tortilla, you can stick it down in there and then you can make like a, a taco salad sort of thing. All right. So I'm going to build one. Move this over here. You put a little bit of your taco meat in here. Good news, Kim. I found it on your website. Did you? Okay, good. I'll just post Very the link. And it, it even, even even allows you to print the recipe. So that's fantastic. Yeah, we may have done this one during the live cooking shows. I just can't remember. We did so many of them. And then put your slaw on top. And then add a little bit of sauce. And then I'm going to add some peanuts for garnishing and limes. A little bit of peanuts on there. Throw a lime on there. And now you've got a taco. We're going to watch football games today. So we have, we have fun food. This is great, you know, football food, party food, whatever. Super Bowl coming up. Super Bowl. Yeah, we're going to focus on that a lot. Um, but yeah. And that, that's how easy that recipe is. And I know I did a lot of it ahead of time and I made it look really easy, but it really doesn't get any easier than that. Yeah. Um, I, I can't stress enough how this, the, the taco meat, how good it is, how easy it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm not even going to put mine in a corn tortilla. I'm going to take this. You want me to show you what I'm going to do? Because I'm going to eat it when I get done. Yep. I'm going to make a plate. Nelson will probably eat his in a taco shop. And I'm just going to cover my plate with this. Because I'm a pig. <laughs> I love to eat. Um, and then I'm going to put the taco meat all over the top. Do you do any kind of batch cooking? I do. Well, like what I just told you, you know, I tend to double all of our recipes and keep sauces in the refrigerator and grains, um, all of that. Put a little bit of peanut sauce on it. Colleen says it looks amazing. Yes, it does. It is amazing. Yeah. And then do, do, a little bit of do you have any grandchildren yet? I do not. I do not, but I've been asking. <laughs> you know, you're not supposed to ask. It makes them mad. <laughs> oh, oh man, that looks beautiful. That looks Doesn't stunning. that look great? I mean, to me, that's better than a taco. 
And then if you want, you know, you can put your taco on the side and break it up and put tortillas, but it's just really, really pretty. That is, that's in the dinner. So, yeah. Any questions? You are an artist. I wasn't going to ask you, you have a bunch of kids and a bunch of dogs, which did you like better? <laughs> Sometimes dogs better than the kids, but now that the kids are older, I like the kids better, actually. I'm just kidding. I'm teasing. <laughs> our, our, kids, our, our kids are pretty mild mannered. I tried to get the oldest one, Whitney, who's watching. I tried to get her to come and do the show with me. But, I'd but, love to have like all the generations. That would be amazing. Yeah, I, I think Laura did Laura did pancakes with me when when I cooked for you last time. Um, but Whitney's quite. They're all very good cooks, actually. Do they all live near you, or you guys live different areas? Um, the oldest lives in Washington, D.C., and the youngest lives <clears throat> about 20 minutes from our house. And my son, the middle one, he's a Colin. He lives in Charlotte, so he's a couple hours away. Yeah. We don't see him as much. Aww. But he, yeah, he has a new um, friend, girlfriend, I guess, who's vegan. Right? So I'm so happy about that. <laughs> That's fantastic. Well, I mean, you got to be to be a Campbell, I would think. So here's a nice comment. Stacy says she has all your books and she loved watching your live shows. Well, that's great. Well, that was how the cookbook came about. We Because we were doing shows every week. We were doing cook-alongs. And I would send people the recipe and all the equipment that they would need and the grocery list. And then we cooked together and people were giving me great feedback. I was getting emails and texts from people. Could you do this? Could you change that? So I had built-in testers and they were, were asking for cookbooks. So at the end of the year, I went to Ben Bella and I talked to AJ about doing, you know, my own publishing, which was a little daunting, but I went to Ben Bella and they were super excited about doing a cookbook. So it took them about a year to get it all edited and on paper. And then we hired a food photographer, which is Nicole Axworthy. She actually did the China study cookbook too. So Great job. I wish I could say I did those photographs, but I did not. Yep. Well, in case you tuned in late, let me grab the book. This is the book that we're talking about today. Plant Pure Comfort Foods, Kim Made Thai Tacos. You'll have to watch it to see how delicious they look. And the recipe is in the book, but we also kindly, she gave it to you. It's in the show notes. So check out the book. The link to buy it is right there. And it's a wonderful book with beautiful. Look, I just opened to another beautiful photo. Yum. Look at that. I love, it. I love it. Well, this has been so much fun. And please come back when your sauces are ready. We because sauces. What's Kim's website? Just look below Tammy into the show notes. All the information is there. All her social media handles, website, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. If you just look right below the video, it's all there and it's clickable. Yes. And we're going to start doing shows tomorrow. On Monday, we're going to tape one of our first shows. So we'll be taping them, not editing them. They'll be live. Um, there'll, there'll, be, there'll be no taping or I mean no editing we'll just upload the raw footage so those will be weekly and where will, people, where will people find these on your YouTube channel yes plant pure TV mm -hmm. nice and and we have the link for that as well so yeah. are, you, are you jumping into another book right away you know AJ I don't think I'm writing any more cookbooks I think I'm done I it's think like, people don't realize how how long it takes and how hard it is. And I was like, are you going to write another book? Why don't you open a restaurant? Do you ever hear that one? Why don't you open a yes. restaurant? Yes. And with an 80% 80, 80 failure rate, that was, and how many people are not plant-based. That was a little bit, um, I don't think I would ever do that. And, and I'm not going to stop writing recipes. And I know you're not going to stop writing recipes, but writing a book is a different kind of a beast. And I think so many people are grabbing recipes online now that I think if I'm going to write recipes I should write them and put them on our website so people will have access to them but but a book is different I'm glad I did this one and, and, I, and I love all my cookbooks and I want to be a resource for people so that they could have them in their homes um, but I think I think we've got enough on paper for now <laughs> yeah. I think I'm going to help Nelson with this dry line and kind of go in that direction well that that is a very big missing so that would be wonderful you know uh colin wrote in the chat that his mother used to say i i wish i had my grandchildren first they were so much fun my mom said something very similar to that too uh -huh. yeah absolutely maria saying you got a beautiful kitchen i love the cabinets the blue that is so cool thank god i love this kitchen i have i do have a gas stove which i'm not used to 
I'm getting used to it. And then of course, all this information that just came out recently about gas and you know, not, not being exposed to gas, that kind of concerned me. I had an induction stove before, which was super fast. I mean, it's, you put something on the stove and it would boil in, in two minutes. And this takes a little bit longer. So I'm still adjusting. My oven is not gas. I did not want a gas oven. But, That's so I interesting because I, I, had, I had electric my whole life because I always lived in apartments. But now we have uh, gas and it, it's, it's different, isn't it? Do you like it? Well, I'm used to it now, you know. Um, what's nice about gas is when you turn it off, it's really off. With electric, you know, that still stays kind of hot, you know. Yeah, yeah. Do you turn the fan on every time you turn the gas stove on? Oh, are you supposed to? Yes, and that's a thing. I didn't realize that. Um, you know, Jill Dalton. She um, she does a whole book like a cooking show. She was telling me you have to do that, and I started doing a little bit of research. So you need to turn your fan on so you don't get any of those fumes. I did not know that. Ay, 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 ay. I told yeah, you. don't Google it. Don't Google it. You don't need to. <laughs> well, 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 the thing is, is I, you know, I do definitely use the stove, like if I'm sauteing an onion, but I, I really do a lot of my cooking in an instant pot. And I think that's pretty safe. Do you use your instant pot or a pressure cooker if you have one? I'm tight. Yes, I have two instant pots. I have way too many appliances. That little room over there, which you can't go in because it's a mess, but I have I have an air fryer, I have two Instant Pots, I have a Vitamix, I have a Ninja Creamy, that's my new um, habit. Yeah, the Ninja Creamy is incredible for people that, that think you can get that texture out of a Vitamix or a, a Blendtec or anything, you know, and then thank you for saying that because it is unparalleled. You can scoop ice cream, you know? I love it. I love it. And you, you can make ice cream with a can of pineapple or- Just literally a can of fruit, unsweetened fruit. Ex exactly. And I, in fact, that's what I eat for breakfast every morning because I love ice cream. So what I do is I freeze my fruit and then I put it in the Ninja Creamy and I have it every morning with some fresh berries because lately I've just been on this whole Ninja Creamy kick. Isn't it great? Especially when the weather's warmer. I love it, but I, I don't exclude it even in the colder weather. Uh, Diane wants to know what time is your show tomorrow, but it's not live, so it wouldn't matter. It's not going to be live. We're going to tape it and I'm not sure when we're going to upload it. But if you go to my Facebook page, Plant Beer Shop, I always tell people when things are coming. So it'll, it's coming. Um, it's not going to be live. So that doesn't matter anyways. But sometime in the next four or five days, it will be uploaded. Nice. How long have you and Nelson been married? A long time. <laughs> well, let's see. We're 40. So it's enough. Yeah. <laughs> so we're 58. Both of us are 58. We met when we were 16. Wow. For 16, I was a junior in high school. Um, and I was really interested in nutrition. I've always been interested in nutrition and culinary. So, and he was real quiet. Um, so I had to kind of work to bring him out. And then I met his family and they, what a fun bunch of people. What a crazy bunch of people, actually. You, you just have no idea what gets said at that big table. With well, all well here's the thing. I know Co Dr. Colin Campbell and Karen a little bit from you know, having spoke at conferences with them and, you know, waiting at airport and, and they're fun people. They're fun people and they're funny people. <laughs> they're funny people. That's right. <laughs> I mean, I meaning they have not funny, like, I mean, they have good sense of humor. It's like I could tell them like an, even an off color joke and they will laugh. They'll and, laugh. Yeah. That's right. They a lot of off color jokes at that table. Well, there's yeah. four boys in the family and, and Leanne, um, she was always kind of a tomboy. I think growing up, she played all the sports. She, she kind of got right in there with the boys. So I was, my parents were empty nesters. I was the youngest when I met Nelson and he was the oldest. So Tommy was two years old. Tommy, the doctor was two years old when I went over there. Oh my so, gosh. I know. So Nelson invited me over for pancake breakfast. That was the first time I ever went. And Karen had like piles and piles of pancakes and fruit sauces. And you, you had to get what you wanted the first time around or you weren't going to get any food. And I learned the hard way on that one, but. Yeah, they're they're a fun bunch of people, and I grew up with girls, so so you know that we we were more more proper. But the Campbells, they were not well, proper. If you met them when Tom Campbell was only two, they hadn't written the China Study yet, so they probably weren't like as big of a deal back then as they are now. No, in fact, they were when I met them, they weren't plant based, but they were leaning in that direction. Colin was talking about it. That was when he was going back and forth to the. Philippines and then China and he was getting his research and he, they actually were featured in the what magazine was that? Medicine. People. People magazine. 
because what she was doing is she was primarily plant-based, but she was using meats and things to garnish food. But so that's, that's kind of where, where I entered the family. And I thought it was really interesting. I loved talking to Colin about his research. In fact, one of the first times I went over there, Colin got his slideshows out. He was spending all night showing me all these slides. And at the end of the night, Nelson apologized. He said, I'm, I'm so sorry. But I loved it. And that I, sounds I, fascinating. But like he wasn't as big of a deal as he is now. So you probably weren't that nervous. Like me. like if, if you were marrying somebody whose father wrote the China study today, you know, that would be like, I would be nervous probably. You know, honestly, we didn't, I didn't really know how popular, well-known he was until we went on the cruise boat, which yeah. is, I don't know, years ago, 10 years. I don't know when we started going on the cruise boat, but um, people were following him around and he had all of his talks and it's like, wow. <laughs> you know, isn't that something? Isn't that something? Here's a fun question. Let me, I just saw it. It was from Randy. Where did it go? Oh, where, uh, she wants to know, were you nervous when you first married Nelson to cook for your in-laws when they visited? No, no, I, no, no. K- K- Karen taught me a lot about cooking. Um, I love cooking for them now because they, they eat pretty much everything I make. So actually Karen and Colin now, they're 88 and 82. They cook really simply. You would probably like to eat at their house, AJ. They eat a lot of potatoes and a lot of fresh greens and she doesn't get real fancy you know as you get older you don't you don't want to spend all this time building all these layers to your meals um she's a simple cook but she's a good cook Um, i would love to eat at their house can you get me an invitation and also one to that beach event that sounds wonderful yeah yeah that would be great we would love to have (laughs) oh my god i would love to hang out with the campbells oh my god um elizabeth says are your sauces processed with heat i'm not sure exactly what that means but um, so our, I think I know what she, she means. So we, we put them in the blender. You're talking about the dry line, I'm assuming. I think she is. Yeah. Yeah. So we blend them with water and then some of them, you actually have to heat them on the stove to thicken them. Cause there's a little bit of a starch in them. Like the curry sauce has, um, a little bit of corn starch. So you would put it on the stove and thicken it, or it would thicken with your stir fry. The peanut sauce goes on the stove. Actually, I believe most of them do. I have a mushroom gravy. That's really good. Um, that's just amazing. Um, The thing is, is I use these all the time. I have a big box of, we're developing them. So I'm always going in there to grab mushroom gravy. I was gone all last week visiting my daughter and Nelson was home. And I think he cooked on them every single night. That's how easy they are. So. Well, that is great. Well, it's so fun catching up with you. Thanks for coming on. I wish you every success with this book. It, It seems like it's doing pretty well when I checked. I think so. I think so. I have to call the publishing company and find out how well it is doing, but I'm going to put a plea out there. So books do well when they get good reviews. Everything does well when you get a good review at a product. So if you have the cookbook and you really love it, write me a review because that's really helpful. If you don't have the cookbook, get the cookbook and then write a review. Try some recipes. Take pictures of what you like um, because that that really helps us to kind of get the word out there. And I think I think it helps to build the, um, when you Google, when you Google on Amazon, it pops up faster if you're writing reviews. So I, I don't know all the ITs behind it, but. <laughs> well, it looks like it's doing pretty good on Amazon. So congratulations and come back when that sauce line is ready. I want to be the first to debut it. Thank you for having me on the show, AJ. I really appreciate it. Always a pleasure. Anybody with the last name Campbell can get in right away. Where to send a review. So Diana, if you buy the book on Amazon, it's very easy to review, but you have to have bought the book in order to review the book. I don't think so. Really? I think you have to be a verified purchase. No? No, I don't think so. Um, Because because I asked my father-in-law to write me a review. He wasn't a verified purchase. And, and, you see it, and you see it on the Amazon site? Okay, I stand corrected. Maybe they changed that. Wow. No, yeah. Kim doesn't have a monthly slot in that, but if she wants one, she can have one. We'll bump somebody. No, we wouldn't do that. But but I'm sure that not everybody that has a monthly slot is going to stay with me forever. You know, they're busy. They're doctors. They got to work. So not that yeah. Anyway, well, fantastic. Thanks so much, Kim. Thanks, AJ. Appreciate it.
Yeah, but Diane did. has the book, so she can make she can definitely write the review then. All right. Well, thanks everyone for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow when my guest is Robin Jeep. She's going to be making a pistachio gelata and teach us how to make yogurt and debuting another new vegan food line that's being endorsed by Dr. Gregor. It's a mug muffin. It's quite fascinating, and I'm sure you'll want to be there to see how it works. Take care.